When factoring, there's some rules we have to follow. And then we have more than one way to factor, and you got the box method, you got the trial and error, you got the AC method. I'm going to teach you the AC method, but if you choose the other methods, that's fine. Um, but before we get started, the biggest thing about factoring is how to read the, the equation. One, it needs to be written in descending order. So I'm going to use this example right here to explain to you how to read it, and then we're going to use this example to actually factor. So if I have this here in descending order, it's on a good start. So if I notice it is a power of 2, 1, and then no variable showing. So therefore, this is correct. So here's a little note. Whatever your sign is here, right, that tells me the operation. So this is the operation. If it is plus, then you add. If it is negative, then you subtract. That makes sense, right? So whatever my sign is on C, which is my constant term here, whatever that is, if it is negative, then that means we're going to find the product that subtracts. Um, if it's positive, then we're going to find the product that can add. And we'll get to why that applies. Just know that this sign tells me the operation. This sign here tells me what we're going to use. The sign to use. Okay, so here we go. If, if it was adding, right, if it was adding both signs would be this. And I'm fixing to explain to you what I mean by both signs. But both signs would be whatever that sign is. In this case, it's a plus. If it's subtracting, then um, one, or the, uh, the sign on B would be would apply to the larger number. And like I said, I'm fixing to explain this to you when we work out that example. But this is some side notes, so it's very helpful to have over to the side so that way you can go back to and understand. Um, later when you go back through your notes and rework a problem. So I'm going to erase this and we're going to work this here and I'm going to explain to you what I meant and we're going to use AC method on the way. Okay, so whenever factoring, my first thing is, is you make sure it's in descending order. So if it's in descending order, I'm going to check off here. I'm going to say descending. Abbreviate it however you want that lets you know that you checked it. It is in descending order. Um, second, I'm going to factor out the GCF. Well, let's look at it. What is my GCF? Well, I have a 6x squared. I have a 3x and a 5. Okay, so there's only two terms with an x value, so x is not it. That's a 6, a 31, and a 5. Well, 5 won't go into 31, right? And 6 won't either. So my GCF here is a positive 1. How do I know it's positive? Because this first term here is positive. If the first term was negative, then I would have said negative 1. And then that means I would have factored a negative 1 out of every bit of this. But in this case, it worked out great. It's a positive 1. So I'm just going to make my little side note, positive 1. So once I have that all established, I'm going to rewrite this over here so I can give myself more room on the board. I have 6x squared minus 31x plus 5. And let's read this. This says, and I'm going to write it in sentence form. So we're going to do AC method. So if you need to write that down, AC method. Well, what is AC method? Remember, a while ago, I had it written like this. 
A is the coefficient on, on x squared, B is the coefficient on x to the first power, and C is my constant. So let's use AC method. We're going to take a product of A times C, and what is A times C here? It's 6 times 5, which is 30. I'm going to finish this out. That, that what? That adds 2 get B. What is B? B is negative 31, right? That's B, negative 31. So this is where the sign is important, what's on B. And remember, I said if you add, the signs are the same. So whatever the sign is on B is the sign we use. If you're subtracting here, then the larger number of my new middle is going to give me the, the sign that's on B. So this here is supposed to yield out our new middle. We're taking the product of A times C, which is 30, right? And we're going to see if they add, because that's what that sign says, to give me B, and B is negative 31. So we know it's 1 times 30. We know it's 2 times 15. We know it's 3 times 10. We know that it's uh, 6 times 5 or 5 times 6. It, it, multiplication is commutative. You can flip-flop it. 6 times 5 is 30. 5 times 6 is 30. Um, so let's go with this one right now. Um, so if I said we're going to add and the signs have to be the same since we're adding, right? Then B says they're both going to be negative. So it says it's a negative 1 minus 30. And does that give me negative 31? I'm going to say yes, that does. Um, so if I add 2 plus 15, no. 3 plus 10, no. 6 plus 5, no. But 1 times 30 is 30. 1 plus 30 is 31. And we got to give them both negatives. So we got a new middle. So if we got a new middle, let's rewrite this. Let's come up here. We're going to keep our first term. And uh, my apologies, guys. I'm going to erase this part right here. Just give myself more room. I hope you got it written down already. So I'm going to bring down the first term. And I'm going to bring down the second or the last term. First and last. We are replacing the middle term with negative 1 minus 30. But remember, there's an x here. So we have to say negative 1 times x. So it's a negative x. Negative 30 times x is negative 30 x. What do we have here? We have one, two, three, four terms. So now we're going to factor by grouping, by splitting this into half. And then let's look at these two. What is the GCF here? Well, they both have an x, and at most I can pull an x to the first. Um, this one has a 6, and this is a negative 1, so at most, my GCF is an X. So, that's the same as dividing this by X, right? X goes into X squared, leaves me 1X, leaves me with X, and then brings down the 6. X goes into negative X, a so negative 1 time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down this negative sign. Because it's going to come factoring out of this. And so when I pull out the negative sign, I see that I have 30x and a 5. This 5 don't have an x, so I can't factor x out. But I do know 5 will go into 30. So at most, I can factor out the 5. That's the same as dividing by the negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative is positive. 5 goes into 36 times, and it leaves the x because there's no x to reduce with. Negative 5 goes into positive 5 one time, and negative 1 times at that. So now let's look at it. Do we have anything in common? 
Well, I have this term minus this term, and I notice the parentheses are, are like, so that's my greatest common factor now. So I'm going to factor out the 6x minus 1, and when I do that, it's the same as dividing by it. And when I divide by it, that leaves me with x minus 5. And this is my answer, and I factored it down. And if I was to use the full method uh, or the distributing it back together, I would go back to where I started.